Hello viewers, I am Dr. Midul Kumar Bortakur of Pivora College, Guwahati Assam. In this lecture, I will discuss about learning behavior of animals. The Zoological Society of Assam has initiated the preparation of various lectures in different topics for the benefit of students during this pandemic period of COVID-19. I am happy to associate with this initiative of Zoological Society of Assam. This lecture, I believe, will be beneficial for the undergraduate and postgraduate students. Learning behavior. The behavior of animal is broadly divided into two categories, innate and learned behavior. Innate behavior means inborn behavior. It is controlled by genes and transmit from one generation to the next. Learned behavior is not inborn or innate type. It is acquired by the animals after birth through experience. In this presentation, I will discuss about learning behavior of animals. Learning outcomes. From this lecture, you will be able to know what is learning, some important features of learning, types of learning, description of each type of learning with example and neural mechanism of learning. Learning can be defined as the modification of behavior through experience. Learning behavior is commonly called as modifiable or acquired behavior as it is acquired by the animals from the surrounding environment through experience. Learning situations are most natural and every one of us learns one thing or the other, although we may not necessarily be aware of it. An individual starts learning immediately after his birth, and it continues till his death. I will discuss learning with one example. Suppose one lit kerosene lamp is kept in a corner of a room at night, and a child enters the room. After seeing the light source, the child approaches to touch the lamp. After touching the lamp, he immediately withdraws his hand from the lamp because the chimney of the lamp is very hot and it burns the hands of the child. On a second instance, when the child faces a lit lamp again, he takes no time to withdraw himself away. He learns to avoid not only the lit lamp, but also all burning source because he has learned from his previous situation that if he touches a burning source, he will get burned. In this way, the behavior of an individual is changed through direct or indirect experience. Some features of learning. It is not heritable. It does not transmit from one generation to the next. It is acquired only through observation or experience. For example, the ability to speak is a innate type of behavior. On the other hand, the ability to speak a particular language like English, Hindi, etc. It is a learned behavior. This behavior does not transmit from one generation to the next generation. Learning behavior. It is adaptable. It is capable of modification to cope with the changing situation. It is progressive type. It is subject to improvement through practice. It is also pre-mutable. In case of innate type behavior, it is fixed action pattern type. Fixed action pattern type means after receiving the stimulus, the action or response is always same. But in case of learning, it is not fixed action type behavior. It is premutable. It is not performed in the same way each time by each individual. Pattern or sequence may change over time. Types of learning. There are different types of learning. In this presentation, I will discuss about each type of learning with example. Number one, habituation. Number two, conditioning 
or associative learning. The conditioning may be classical conditioning or operant or instrumental conditioning. Number three, imprinting. Number four, inside learning. And the last one is latent learning. Habituation. It is the simplest form of learning. This type of learning is observed from protozoa to class mammalia. This is the case where upon repeated exposure to a stimulus, the animal gradually decreases its natural responses until it may disappear entirely. I will explain with the help of one example. Suppose a spider is sitting at the center of its web. The experimenter vibrates at a point on the web. It will act as a stimulus for the spider. The spider immediately runs to the point of vibration because he thinks an insect is trapped. As this vibration occurs when an insect is trapped. But nothing is found. The spider returns to its place in the web. If the same neutral stimulus is given several times, the spider will no longer rush out to investigate. It remains in the center of the web because it gets habituated to that stimulus. I will give you another example. Suppose I am discussing about learning in an undergraduate class with students. If suddenly a big sound is heard, what will happen? Every one of us will be startled. If the same sound comes again after some time, we will again be disturbed. If the same sound comes again and again, we can do the class without feeling disturbed because we are habituated with the situation. Significance of habituation. By habituation, animals learn to conserve energy and time by not responding to an irrelevant stimulus. So stimulus may be relevant or irrelevant stimulus. So it is not necessary for an animal to respond to all types of stimulus. Conditioning. It is also called as associative learning. Conditioning is defined as a process in which application of a known stimulus leads to modification in the behavior of the animal. It is recognized in two different forms. Number one, classical conditioning and number two, operant or instrumental conditioning. Classical conditioning. Classical conditioning results due to formulation of an association between a conditioned stimulus with an unconditioned stimulus. Classical conditioning was discovered by Ivan Pavlov, the father of conditioning. Pavlov's experiment. In an interesting experiment, Pavlov, the father of conditioning, kept a dog hungry for the night. Then he tied him onto the experimental table. Pavlov kept himself hidden from the view of dog, but able to view the experiment by means of a set of mirrors. Pavlov repeatedly blew meat powder into the mouth of the dog and recorded amount of saliva secreted by the dog by planting a tube in the salivary duct. Then he associated the sound of a bell with the meat powder and repeated this procedure many times at successive intervals. When food was presented before the dog and the bell was rung at the same time, there was automatic secretion of saliva from the mouth of the dog and Pavlov measured the amount of saliva secreted. After several trials, the dog was given no food, 
but the bell was rung and measured the amount of saliva secreted by the dog. It was found that even in the absence of food, unconditioned stimulus, the ring of the bell caused the dog to secrete the saliva. Here, the meat powder it is a natural food. It is called unconditioned stimulus. The salivation to the meat powder. This is called unconditioned response or reflex. The sound of a bell. It is not food. It is artificial stimulus and it is called as conditioned stimulus. The salivation to the bell or against the conditioned stimulus. It is called as conditioned response or reflex. So, classical conditioning is a process in which a previously neutral stimulus is enabled to elicit a response that is never elicited before. Next, operant conditioning. This is another form of conditioning. Operant conditioning is a type of learning where the animal has some control over the stimulus it receives and often over the response it produces. It is quite different from the classical conditioning. In case of classical conditioning, animal has no control over the stimulus received and also the response produced by the animal. In the year 1930, B.F. Skinner developed an apparatus named Skinner Box that made it possible to demonstrate operant conditioning. In the Skinner Box, one small lever was attached in a way that the animal has to press it in order to receive a pellet of food from an automatic dispenser. In his experiment, when the experimental hungry animal was placed in the box, it ordinarily responded to hunger with random investigation of its surroundings. When it accidentally pressed the bar or liver, a food pellet was delivered. The animal did not show any sign of association with the two events, that is liver pressing and receiving of food. When the animal pressed the liver accidentally again, the food was again delivered. Then the animal began to press the liver more frequently. This sort of learning is called conditioning. Skinner's work was based on Thorndike's law of effect. According to this law, behavior that is followed by pleasant consequences is likely to be repeated. On the other hand, behavior followed by unpleasant consequences is less likely to be repeated. As the pressing of the liver and receiving of the foot, the animal got the foot when he pressed the liver. So this is the consequences, pleasant consequences, as a result of which it is repeated many times. Skinner introduced a new term reinforcement into the law of effect. Behavior which is reinforced tends to be repeated. On the other hand, behavior which is not reinforced tends to die out or be extinguished, that is weakened. If the animal did not receive the food after pressing the liver, the animal will not press the liver again. The another type of learning that is imprinting. This type of learning occurs at a remarkably early age. The Conard Lawrence, the father of animal behavior, was the first one to notice this type of learning and he coined the term imprinting. Through imprinting, the young animals begins to recognize an object and develop association with it of the world. The phenomenon of imprinting is seen most clearly in birds during the early period of lives. 
following hatching. Lawrence performed experiments on gerilek goose. It is a kind of duck-like bird. He collected some eggs and hatched out in an incubator and was present when the eggs hatched. He was the first large moving object that the gooselings had seen after hatching. It was observed that goosling began following him instead of their mother goose present with them. The time required for imprinting may vary from several hours to several days, depending on species. If the bird is not imprinted within the first few days after hatching, it may never imprint at all. Imprinting depends on some special condition of the nervous system, prevailing only early in development. This period is called critical or sensitive period. It is seen that lambs, birds, dogs, cats reared by human follow them because an attachment bond is formed during imprinting. Imprinting may be filial type of imprinting or sexual imprinting. Now what is filial imprinting? In early life of many animals, a period starts as soon as their heads are born. During this critical period, they learn to identify or recognize their parents by following them. It is known as filial imprinting. Now, what is sexual imprinting? If the filial imprinting is carried out uninterrupted, this knowledge is utilized by the animals later in the adult life to recognize mates, known as sexual imprinting. F. Sauce reported that males of mallard duck, when reared with members of other species, they try to pair with the females of those species on which they had been imprinted in early stages. Insight learning this is another important type of learning. Insight learning is regarded as highest form of learning as it is seen in higher form of animals like primates. In insight learning, the animal makes new association between previously learned tasks in order to solve a new problem. It is the ability to solve complex problem with something more than simple trial and error. The insight learning is purely a mental process. Kohler experiment on chimpanzee. A classic case of insight learning comes from the work on chimpanzee by Kohler. In his experiment, a chimpanzee named Sultan was put inside a case with some boxes and a banana was hung from the roof of the case, which was out of his reach by using his arm. The chimpanzee tried to reach at the banana by jumping but could not succeed. Suddenly, he got an idea and used the boxes as jumping platform by placing one box upon another and then climbing up to reach the banana. Here, the chimpanzee could successfully appreciate the problem and solve it by a purely mental process. In an another experiment, Kohler kept a chimpanzee in a case and a banana was placed at the top of the case like the previous experiment. Here, Kohler provided two sticks inside the case, but every stick was too short to touch the banana. One stick was hollow at one end so that the other stick can be attached. The chimpanzee first tried with the sticks one after the another but fail. The chimpanzee later joined the two sticks and reached the banana. This type of learning is called insight learning. Insight learning 
also occurs in human when people recognize relations that can help them to solve new problems. For example, people use a chair or stool in order to get high enough to paint the top of the wall. Insight learning is also known as Gestalt learning. As the learning is concerned with the whole individual and arises from the interaction of an individual with the situations or environment. Through this interaction emerge new forms of perception, imagination, and ideas, which altogether constitute insight. Latin learning. This is another type of learning. The term Latin learning was coined by psychologist Edward Tolman. When acquisition of a response is not displayed during the time of learning, but remains hidden or latent, and expressed later, it is called Latin learning. In nature, animal learns many things from their surroundings. This information has no apparent immediate functional value, but may become important for survival later. Latent learning is a peculiar form of learning which remains unrewarded at the time of learning. In most cases, the information we have learned is not always recognizable until the moment that we need to display it. Metzger experiment. Metzger was the first to demonstrate latent learning in animals. In his experiment, he collected some mice and divided into two groups, group one and group two. Group, was, group one was given exposure to a closed room, having some natural features such as logs, leaves, trees, etc. Group two was kept in laboratory cages for few days. After few days, group two was released in the enclosed room with an owl as predator. Metzger observed that owl was able to catch maximum individual from group two because they had no prior experience about the hiding places of the room. Latent learning helped individuals of group one to hide away from the owl. Next, neural mechanism of learning. Learning occurs among animals in different forms like habituation, conditioning, inside learning, latent learning, and imprinting. Phylogenetically, complex forms are found in animals possessing complex type of nervous system. The brain is responsible for the learning process. Besides brain parts, spinal cord has some role in classical form of learning. Anatomical structures associated with learning. Cerebral cortex, it is also called as cerebral hemisphere and in case of mammal, it is commonly called as neocortex, that is newly evolved part of the brain. Cerebral cortex is mainly responsible for the development of learning process, but a decorticated dog responds and can be trained for the classical conditioning using a stock as unconditioned stimulus. Decorticated dog means the dog without the cerebral cortex. A classic experiment was carried out by Carl Leslie in 1950 on rat cortex to know the rule of cortex in learning behavior using ablation technique. Based on his experiment, Leslie pointed out that two specific areas of cerebral cortex is deeply involved in learning of animals. These are intertemporal cortex and prefrontal cortex. What is intertemporal cortex or prefrontal cortex? In case of vertebrate brain, the cerebral cortex is divided into two halves. 
right cerebral cortex and left cerebral cortex by special tissue called corpus callosum. Again, each cerebral hemisphere has four loops. These are frontal loop, parietal loop, occipital loop, and temporal loop. So what is intertemporal cortex? Intertemporal cortex lies in the lower portion of the temporal loops of cerebral hemisphere. It has been reported that removal of this part impairs learning in many animals. If anyone remove the intertemporal part of the cerebral cortex, then animal is unable to show learning behavior. Prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is an area at the tip of the frontal loops and its removal greatly impairs learning in many animals, including monkey. If anyone remove the prefrontal loop from the cerebral hemisphere, animal is unable to show learning behavior. It is experimentally proved by many ethologists. Roger Walcott Sperry, the Nobel laureate, reported that corpus callosum plays an important role in transferring information from one cerebral hemisphere to the other. The subcortical structure, subcortical structure means these are the structure, they are not part of the cerebral cortex. The subcortical structure like amygdala and hippocampus these are the part of midbrain, are also associated with the learning behavior of animals. Brooke et al. 2010 reported that dorsolateral prefrontal cortex and the ventromedial prefrontal cortex are responsible for human observational learning. So in this presentation, the followings of the books and journal I consulted for the preparation of this presentation. Thank you for feedback or if you have any query you can directly contact me in my email id that is at the rate of redivmail.com. Thank you.